amen. We're on week two of Living Love, Living Free. It's called The Fight for Your Heart. And we're going to begin um, on page 29. I'm going to begin reading Ephesians 3, 17 through 21. May Christ, through your faith, actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love, that you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love, what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth of it, that you may really come to know, practically through experience for yourself, the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge, that you may be filled through all your being unto all the fullness of God, may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. Now to him who by in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. That is one of my favorite passages in the whole Bible. This, this passage of scripture tells us that when we know and experience the love of Christ, we are going to be filled to the full with God himself. And when we know and believe and receive the love of Jesus, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever hope, dream, or desire in our lives. In last week's lesson, there was a scripture in there that said, go after a life of love as though your life depended on it because it does. Experiencing the will and plan of God for our lives has everything to do with coming to know how much we're loved by him. Everything. What You know, the scripture says my determined purpose is to know Jesus. He is love. Our determined purpose is to know love and the power outflowing from love's resurrection. That's our determined purpose. And when we know how much he loves us, then our lives experience exceedingly abundantly above all we could hope or dream or desire. That's the life Jesus came to give us, ladies. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Jesus. Okay, we're going to look at one scripture in this passage of scripture today. Ephesians 3, 17, it says, May Christ through your faith actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your heart. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. The word heart in this scripture literally means, it comes from the Greek word cardia, and it means your thoughts, your feelings, your mind, the very seat of your will. So this scripture is saying, make Christ through your faith actually dwell, settle down, make his permanent home in your thoughts, in your mind, in your emotions. May Jesus Fill your mind. May he fill your emotions. May he fill your thoughts. May he be the center of everything you decide, the very seat of your will. That every decision and every truth that you believe be centered in Christ. That's what the Apostle Paul was inspired to pray for us, that by our trust in Jesus, that we would be completely and totally filled up with him. And that he is life. That's where life is, is when our mind, our thoughts, our emotions, and the decisions that we make, the beliefs of our heart are centered in Christ. But you know, all of us have grown up in a, in a dark world, in a sin-filled world, And all of us have heard many other things that have come at our heart besides what Jesus says. And our heart is where all of our beliefs are stored. The Bible says it is with the heart that we believe. 
So inside your heart lies what you believe about God, what you have decided, the very seat of your will, what you have decided, what is true about God, about you, about your value, about um, whether or not you're approved or not, in the very seat of your will, in the very center of your heart, everything about your life, you have decided what you believe. Thank you, Jesus, that all of you, I believe, have decided to believe that Jesus is your Savior. Down deep in your heart, you have decided in the seat of your will that Jesus is your Savior. Isn't that good? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> There's many other things that the Father tells us that maybe we don't believe, like, for example, our value. I have decided, Connie Witter has decided, down in the, in the very center of her being, in the very core of her heart, she has decided what determines her value. For a lot of years, in the very center of my heart, I believed that my value was determined by how good I was, by how productive I was, by what people thought of me, whether they were pleased with me. That's what determined how much I was worth. And because I believed that down in the, in the center of my heart, I lived in insecurity for many, many years of my life because in that area of my heart, I believed a lie. I believed that my value was based on where I ranked in society, what people thought of me, how much people needed me, how productive I was, how gifted I was. And guess what? Your value can go down really fast as that list goes higher and higher and higher. True? But because I believed that lie, I lived not in God. I wasn't experiencing the exceedingly abundantly above life that comes when I believe that my value is in Christ. See, when I decided one day as the Holy Spirit began to teach me and the Holy Spirit began to show me and he gave me the power to believe the truth that my value is found in Christ, then every time the enemy comes at me to try to tell me that my value is found in my, found in my children or found in my, what my husband thinks or found in what, how good I did something, I know in the core of my being, in the center of my heart, comes up, no, that's not true. That is not true. Even though the enemy tries to bring that on me again, inside my heart, I have let the truth that my value is based on the blood of Jesus that was paid for me. That is what comes up. And that is what brings me peace. And that is what causes when you begin to believe you're valuable in Christ, oh my goodness, your life, I just, I think it is amazing how when I lived with believing my value was based on something I did, how discouraged and, and sad I would often become. And how now that I know my value is based in Christ and the core of my heart says, no, I, my value is in Christ. How much peace comes to my heart when somebody else has a negative opinion of me or when I wasn't productive as I wanted to be that day. Right? Or when my children don't need me, and, I, and we all want to be needed, right? But finding our value in him determines our whole life. What we believe in the center of our being determines our whole life. Let's take finances, for example. We can say all day, yeah, I believe. I believe that God's going to meet all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. But when the lack is facing you, that's when you find out what you really believe. You can say all day long, yeah, I believe. You know, I, I am surrounded by favor like a shield. I, and the first person that says something negative about you, you're like, oh, I can't believe they think that about me. My goodness, I'm, a, you know. Instead of, but you find out what your heart really believes when the negative circumstances come hit you. Because we're all going to face them. 
In this world, you are going to be tempted to believe that you're not valuable. In this world, you're going to be tempted to believe that you're going to lack. In this world, you're going to be tempted to believe that your dreams aren't going to come true. In this world, you're going to be tempted to believe that you're disapproved of and you're not good enough. But you find out what your heart really believes when the circumstances come at you and how you respond to that. And you know what? If you respond negatively, you're still wonderful. You're still good. All it shows you is that, Lord, I need a revelation of your love for me in this area. And that's what I want to encourage you all to do, ladies. We know, if you've been in church very long, you know a lot of good scriptures. You know a lot of good promises, right? But it's when we're faced with the opposite of that, like, like healing, like Sherry was saying. We all know that by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. But how do we respond when we feel a pain in our bodies? How do we respond when a pain shoots through our head? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? How do we respond? Now, we're all going to be tempted. When that pain goes through our head or in our bodies, we're all going to be tempted to believe the lie that something's wrong with me. I'm sick, <laughs> right? We're all going to be tempted to believe the lie. But how, how do, do we respond to that temptation? No, no, I am healed. By his stripes, I am healed. That's who I really am. That's what I believe in the core of my heart. And what we believe in the core of our heart, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What you really believe down deep in here is what comes out here. And when we see, again, no con we cannot be free until we realize, Lord, I don't really believe you. I really don't believe you love me. To be able to confess that and say, Lord, I really don't believe you're going to take care of my needs. Just say it. <laughs> Just admit it. It's okay. You're still wonderful. You're still good. But when you admit that, you're allowing the Holy Spirit to come into that deep place in your heart and, and do a work in there so that you can come to the place where you can fully trust him. In our weakness, he makes us strong. You don't get con condemned because, oh, yeah, I don't believe anything, really. You know, I thought I believed God all my life, but now Connie told me if I respond differently when I have negative circumstances, I really don't believe at all. Oh, my, you know. And so you go and you get condemned about that, right? Yep. Yeah. No condemnation. We are here to learn to live loved, and the only way we're going to be free is to be able to say, Father, I don't really believe what you say in this area of my life. Help me. What is it you say? Tell me again, Lord. And let that thing, go, that word, go down into the deep recesses of your heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. Whatever area it is that you struggle to believe God's love, it's in asking listening and responding to his word that you're going to be free. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs 27, 19 on the bottom of page 31 says, as the water reflects the face, so the heart reflects the person. This is why as the water reflects our face, so our heart reflects our person. If I believe what Jesus says about me, I'm going to live secure and confident in this world. If I do not believe what Jesus says about me and his love for me, I'm going to live insecure and unsure in this world. My heart reflects my person. I mean, did I say that right? What's in my heart is going to be reflected in my life. If I believe that people don't like me, guess what's going to happen? People aren't going to like me. If I believe I'm a failure, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to continue to fail. If I believe that I'm not valuable, guess what? Other people aren't going to value me either. And that's the truth, especially for women. You're valuable. You are so valuable. 
And if I believe I'm valuable, then I'm not going to allow somebody to treat me as though I'm not valuable. But if, I, if I, my heart believes I'm not valuable, I'm going to let people treat me badly because I think I deserve to be treated badly. My heart reflects my, my life. My life reflects my heart. So it's so important that our hearts are filled up with Jesus and his love for us. Thank you, Jesus. There's a fight going on for our heart. That's why the enemy wants you to believe his lies so that your heart reflect your life reflects the insecurity and the fear. And Jesus wants you to believe his love and his truth so your life reflects his glory, his good opinion of you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. We see very clearly in that scripture, there are two plans for your life. There are two plans for your heart. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Two plans working at all times. The enemy's trying to get you to believe him. Jesus so desperately wants you to embrace what he says about you. And the decision that we make in the seat of our will is what comes out in our lives. What we believe in our hearts determines the course of our lives. So how important it is, is it for us to recognize the devil's lies, to reject them, and to embrace God's truth? How important is it? it your very life depends on it. Your children's life depends on it. My life depends on it. My world depends on it. I mean, you know, my, my circuit, my, everything about my life depends on me saying, Jesus, help me believe everything you say about me. There's a fight going on for our hearts, ladies. And we decide who wins. We decide who wins by whether or not we're going to continue to go down that path of believing the negative things or whether we're going to turn our hearts to Jesus, open up our hearts and let him in to those places that we are not sure, and let him rework, <laughs> do heart surgery, right? We need some heart surgery sometimes, don't we? In those places that were sad and broken. Woo! I wanted to get to this scripture. I've been meditating on it all week long. Talked about it a little bit last week, but this is such a powerful scripture. I'm going to read on page 33, Proverbs 4, 20 through 23. And it says, My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Another translation says, carefully guard your thoughts, because they are the source of true life. Our Father is saying, my child, listen carefully to what I say. Pay attention. You know, we all hear a whole lot of things. I hear my children talking all day long. A whole different story, hearing them talk and listening to what they're saying. We can come to church and we can hear the word of God. There's a whole different thing than listening to what is being said. The father says, my child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my word. Don't let it get out of your sight. Let it penetrate deep within your heart, for it will bring you life and healing and health to your whole body. Life, oh, what's that word life mean? The word life means to give promise, to restore, to make whole. His word will make you whole. 
Health means a medicine, a cure, deliverance, healing. A physician who thoroughly makes one whole. Our God, our Father God, the one who loves us, is a physician who makes us thoroughly whole. How does he do that? Through his words of love. My child, listen to what I say. You are valuable. I paid a great price for you. Let that truth go deep, deep in your heart. Don't just push it away. Don't just go, no, that can't be true. Let it penetrate, my child. Let it penetrate deep within your heart. You were paid for with the precious blood of Jesus. You are valuable. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> my child, listen to what I say. I'm going to take care of you. I take care of the birds of the air, and I'm going to take care of you. Don't be distracted by anything in this world throws at you. Let my word, I will supply your need, penetrate deep into your heart, for it will bring you life. It will bring you my promise. It will bring you my promise if you'll let my word of love for you penetrate deep within your heart. My word will bring you life, the abundant life that I have planned for you all along. My child, listen to me when I say, this situation you're facing, I'm going to work it out for your good. Listen to me. Don't be distracted by what you're seeing in the world. Let my word penetrate deep within your heart, for it will bring you my plan. It will bring you the life I always dreamed for you. It will bring you promise, and it will make your heart whole. My child, listen to me when I say that I will pour my spirit upon your children, and they will rise up and say, I belong to the Lord. Don't let that word that I said get out of your sight. Don't listen to what your child's saying. Don't look at what they're doing. Listen to me. Let my word penetrate deep inside your heart. For it will bring you life. It will make you whole. It will cause those places of doubt those, those, those places of brokenness to be whole. My word, if you'll listen. How many times in my life have I heard the word of God and just pushed it away because of somebody else's circumstance, because of my own circumstance, because of what somebody said, because of what I've been taught. I heard the good news and I just pushed it away. And you know what that brought me? Death. It brings you death. Death is depression, discouragement, sadness, hope, hopelessness. Feeling like nothing's going to ever work out for you. That's what death feels like in a human heart. But now, I want to live loved and live free, don't you ladies? So I listen. Jesus, what do you say? Tell me your love one more time. Show me one more time. Take in the time to have relationship with the Father who loves you, with the Savior who died for you, so that you could be whole and you could be free. My child, listen to me when I say, my plan is to prosper you not to harm you, to give you hope and give you a future. Don't be distracted by the economy. Don't be distracted by what somebody said negative over you. Don't be distracted by anything. Keep my words in the center of your heart, for they will bring you life, healing and health to your whole 
There's a fight, ladies, going on for our hearts. And it's time for the enemy to be done in our lives and his lies to be done. Guard your heart with all diligence. Guard your thoughts. A thought's going to come. They come to me. They came to Jesus. They come to everyone. Negative thoughts are going to come. But it's at that moment when you realize that's not what my father says. You reject the lie and you guard your heart and you say, Jesus, what do you say? What do you say about this situation I'm facing? And you listen and he says, I love you, girl. I'm going to take care of it for you. I'm going to work it out for your good. Trust me. And you say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for watching today's TV broadcast. In today's message, I taught from my Bible study, Living Love, Living Free. Did you know you were created to be loved? The core need of every human heart is love. And although we've all looked to our parents, our spouse, our children, and even our friends for value, acceptance, and approval, only Jesus can fully and completely meet the needs of your heart. I invite you to join us on this exciting journey of learning to live in the Father's love through the finished work of Jesus and discover your true identity in Him. Come join us by taking advantage of this special offer. In her new book, Living Loved, Living Free, Connie Witter takes you on a journey to begin living in the unconditional love of the Father through the finished work of Jesus. We live loved and live free when we take on the Father's opinion of us. And we say, Father, I know you love me, and what you say about me is true. For a gift of $20, receive the Living Love, Living Free book and the bonus CD. Call the number on your screen or go online at ConnieWitter.com. If you have been blessed by today's message, we invite you to partner with us. Your monthly gift will make it possible for more people to hear the true gospel of grace. Call the number on your screen right now or visit ConnieWitter.com to sign up as a partner today. Together, we can make a difference and see precious lives transformed and live free in the Father's love. Visit us online at ConnieWitter.com for numerous grace-filled resources for men, women, teens, and children. We offer devotional books for girls, a preschool curriculum for kids, companion CDs and DVDs for our adult Bible studies, and so much more. Additionally, many of our products are available as a download on your digital devices for fast access. Connect with us online at ConnieWitter.com. And remember, it's all because of Jesus.